So, welcome to my 2,000 subs Q&A audio. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy the answers that I give to your wonderful questions. And yeah, let's just get right into it. First question is, who are some of the people that inspire you? Uh, and I guess life in general, that would be my two best friends who shall remain nameless. Uh, aside from them, all of you guys inspire me, uh, as I guess would that sound cliche, but to be honest, yeah, you guys inspire me, uh, with all your wonderful comments, your encouragement, your support, just, you know, everything you guys do for me, that inspires me. When you were a young boy... What did you want to become when you grow up? Uh, I wanted to be a pilot. I still kind of do. Figure that's something I could do in like my off time. But yeah, when I was a kid, I I really wanted to be a fighter pilot. Um, I guess it all started when my mom bought a computer for me to use for school, and then I found like a flight simulator game, uh, and I kept playing that like over and over again during the summer. And yeah, that's where I guess I developed a, I don't know, an interest in learning how to fly. What was your inspiration for the Friends to Lovers videos? Um, past experiences are usually a basis for those stories. Um, there's always at least some truth behind them. There's always going to be like a little bit of like factual uh, moments that actually happened that I plug in there somehow uh, but I'll never say which ones <laughs> have you ever liked One Direction or listened to one of their songs I mean yeah I mean I've heard their songs on the radio but I wouldn't consider myself a fan uh, I don't mean to say that like a like I don't like them um, like I mean I recognize and respect that they have talent and they can sing and perform you know I'm not going to take that away from them but I don't actively search for or play their music on the regular what type of ASMR do you like listening to the most favorite triggers um my favorite trigger for me and I don't even know if it's a trigger is if more than it is just like something I like to hear a lot um, is breathing sounds uh, like when I need to relax or calm down or sleep but I can't uh, as weird as this may seem but hearing somebody breathe helps push that like relaxation button um, I want to say it has to do with the fact that like if I hear somebody breathing it like makes me want to match that sort of tempo so it kind of forces me to breathe in a more like relaxed state because <laughs> the way I breathe uh, if especially if you notice or if I notice myself breathing I'll start to breathe like erratically or just like like shallower breaths and I'm just like <laughs> it <laughs> it's kind of like a pug but not like a pug I, I don't know why I made that reference but anyway yeah to answer that question uh, breathing sounds are kind of like my, my favorite ASMR triggers. What do you do for a living and do you enjoy it? Uh, sorry, but I'm going to keep that information to myself. <laughs> um, but what I can tell you is that I enjoy my job enough to stay. Um, I like I like the people I work with more than I like the job itself. Um, I mean, it's certainly not my dream job, but I'm kind of like the person that's like, you know, it could be worse. Uh, all the stuff that I complain about here, I'm going to end up finding a way to complain about if I move on to another job. It's just, it's just how it always is. But yeah, it's, it, I enjoy the people I work with, and that makes... I guess the job a little bit more enjoyable. It, it makes it worth it. 
Is it sometimes difficult for you to come up with ideas for audios? Definitely. Um, honestly, like after after I get done recording an audio and publishing it, um, it it kind of takes like a weight off of my shoulders where I'm just like, okay, good. I got another week. <laughs> I just bought myself another week to come up with another audio and record it and all that stuff. Um, I get. I guess what you would call like creator's block all the time because uh, the thing is I don't I don't write scripts or like take down notes and stuff I mean I sometimes I write down ideas but what happens is I only write a few down and then I'll realize like some of these ideas aren't feasible or like I can't come up with you know an improv for that idea so I don't record it and it it becomes a pain but I don't mind it because whenever an idea does come up and I'm able to record I'm just like I'm going it it gets to like this creative flow but yeah I it it is difficult sometimes to come up with ideas for my audios and I've been lucky where it's like I don't have an extended creator's block <laughs> Who are some of your favorite audio creators and what got you into this? Uh, Sky Vibes Audio is a favorite and she was actually the one that kind of convinced me and inspired me to make my own audio channel. Uh, I, I said this once before in, in the previous Q&A audio, but uh, yeah, she was, she was the one that told me, you know, like, you should try this out. Like, your voice is relaxing and, you know, give it a shot. And... I, you know, took a shot, and here I am. Other favorites of mine uh, include uh, Chrissy Lizzie Audios, who's actually the one that asked this question, and by no means does that mean I'm biased towards her stuff. Like, honestly, I like I like her stuff. Um, I also like Vixie Voice. Um, she makes great roleplay audios. Uh, Teacup Audio, I listen to a lot. Um, but yeah, all around, just the, just good stuff um, from all of them. And if you haven't already, definitely check them out. How old are you? Well, I'm young enough to hang for an all-nighter, but old enough to know better and leave early because I have work the next morning. <laughs> uh, sorry, I can't tell you more than that again. Um, but I can tell you that I am a Pisces. What is the happiest moment of your life? That is a really hard question to answer. At least it's hard to find one single moment where it stands out above all the others. Because the thing is, I'm generally a mellow slash happy guy. So, you know, when good things happen or things that stand uh, stand out a little bit more than the rest, it it's never really like, oh my god, that's like this is the happiest I've ever been. You know, it's. I mean, there's a lot of times where, you know, I've been like really happy, and it extends for like a couple of days that you know that where things don't really get me down, because of something happening. It doesn't ruin my mood, but. I can't pinpoint one exact moment that stands out above all the rest. Uh, that's a really, really hard question to answer, and I'm sorry I can't give more than that. Has anything changed when it comes to recording, or maybe you feel different now compared to the time when you started this channel? Uh, yeah, a little bit's changed. Um, I feel a little bit more confident now when it comes to recording. Um, like, <laughs> like talking to a wall with a mic in between me and the wall doesn't feel as weird. Uh, I'm not as, as, as like self-conscious about it as I used to be. Um, I think, I think more about how I feel when I say something rather than like what it sounds like afterwards. Um, I just, I guess I guess it's easier to be more natural now than it was before because I think before I used to just I used to kind of repeat 
you know, the phrase in my head, you know, just act natural, just act natural, act natural. And it was more forced natural. But now it's just, you know, I feel like I feel like I'm just talking to somebody across the room or at least, you know, sitting across from me. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm more comfortable recording now than I, I used to be. In your last Q&A, you said that no one knows about your ASMR channel on YouTube. Has anything changed? Nope. Uh, no one close to me knows my YouTube alter ego. Wahahaha. At least none that I know of. Um, I don't know if anybody that is close to me has, you know, subscribed to my channel and just hasn't said anything about it, but if you're listening to this and you know who I am based on my voice, please keep it a secret. Please. I'm begging you. <laughs> Do you have any strange or unique phobias? Um, like certain things give me the creeps, but not to where like I lose my mind and run out of the room or, you know, just completely shut down about it. Um, there's really nothing unique about my fears, I guess. I, at least no, it's not, you know, any stranger than the next guy. You know, I mean, I'm still like nervous at, you know, about heights because I certainly don't want to fall to my doom. <clears throat> Excuse me. And insects give me the heebie jeebies, but that doesn't mean I'm going to like, you know, shy away from one being in the room. But yeah, um, nothing really strange or unique about my phobias. What's one thing about yourself that you like and one thing you'd like to work on? I, I like the outlook of life that I gained over the years. Um, I know that things aren't always black and white, and some things are always going to remain gray matter. Um, you know, one thing I'd like to work on, though, is my stress management. Because <laughs> um, the thing is, I don't necessarily bottle my, my, like, feelings or emotions in. It's more like I kind of just put them off to the side to deal with later, and then I forget about it. But... It doesn't mean that it's been resolved. So sometimes it will resurface as something that resembles depression. But I don't want to call it depression because I feel like that takes away from people that actually have it. Um, I guess you can just call it like severe sadness where I'm just like, bleh, and I don't want to do anything. What do you first notice about someone when you meet them? I'd have to say their sense of humor. If you can laugh with me, then I know you're good people. Um, <laughs> it takes a little bit, but yeah, I mean, it's it's all about how well you and I can laugh with each other. <laughs> Name one thing you've learned the hard way. Oof. Okay. Um, life is not a fairy tale, and the perfect partner does not exist. So, hear me out. Um, I learned long ago that eventually people are going to come along and they are just going to absolutely wreck you. It, it just happens. You know, your, your heart is going to get broken because, because people are imperfect beings. Um, the thing to take away from it is that you got to pick up the pieces no matter how shattered they are and those pieces of you that you got to pick up you got to put back together but it took it took getting my heart demolished to learn that lesson but the thing is the hardest lessons are the ones you remember the most so yeah that's yeah that's definitely the <laughs> Some this is one thing that I learned the hard way, and there's a lot more. Best piece of advice you've received. I've had to teach myself a lot of life's lessons, but uh, one of the deepest ones actually came from my best friend, or one of my best friends. 
Uh, the thing is, I was in a relationship that was somewhat toxic, and being the person that he was, he didn't want to see me fall in that rabbit hole. And he said, and I quote, because <laughs> I always remember what he said to me. He said, if being with her makes you truly happy, then stay. If not, then consider what's it, what it's going to do to you in the long run. And then he also said, whatever you do, I'm with you either way. Just promise me that you'll do what makes you happy. And like, I'll never forget those words. And like, it, they just stuck with me. Um, you know, he helped me understand that you can't, you can't always do for others and rely on their feelings of happiness to be a source of your own. We're all individual people with our own set of emotions. And it's, the thing is, you, you gotta make your heart strong enough to stand on its own two feet. Dream country to visit. I'm gonna have to say Europe, since I've never been. Um, really do wanna visit some historical landmarks from places like Athens, Rome, Paris, etc., etc. How would you describe your personality? Hmm. I guess the best way to describe it would be easygoing. Uh, almost to the point where it looks like I don't care about anything. But I do. I just know the difference between the things I can't control and the things that I can. What do you value most in a friendship? The bond. James Bond. Just kidding. That was really lame. Um, but yeah, the, the bond between people. Uh, that's, that's honestly what I value the most. When you have friends that even though you could be away from and lose contact with for years, and yet when things line up to where you can reunite and it feels like you just you can just pick up where you left off, that's the kind of thing I value the most. That's when you know you have true friends. Um, you know, when you notice that kind of a bond, you realize just how valuable and rare that kind of thing is because it's something that can last a lifetime. If you had a whole day to do whatever you wanted, what would you do? <laughs> it's easy. Go to Disneyland and ride every single ride. I don't care. Uh, anybody want to come with? <laughs> I haven't been in like so long, but I really want to go. <laughs> Last song you've listened to today. That would be Electric by Alina Braz and Khalid? 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 Um, I just really like how it's like a slow tempo and it's just a borderline sexy beat. <laughs> Favorite scary movie? It's hard to pick. Um, I'm not even sure if I have one. Uh, the latest one that I really liked was Hereditary. That one was pretty good. Kind of messed you up, but pretty good. Um, oh, what I can tell you is one subgenre of horror movies that I like is that that like found footage style of filming. Uh, I feel like that that perspective is just great because you're only aware of what's in the frame. Like you're along for the ride. Um, some people don't like that because you don't know what's going on, but I think that's the point. Uh, the scare is, is in the unseen and the unknown. <laughs> what is the worst thing you've ever tasted? Um, <laughs> one time I got pranked into eating a piece of beef jerky that had been soaked with ghost pepper extract and like some other stuff I'm, i don't even know what it was um like i won't shy away from spicy foods uh i mean i'm not like i don't eat spicy foods all the time but like I, I'll, I'll eat it 
Um, but this, like, there was absolutely no point to this piece of beef jerky or this bag of jerky being as spicy as it was. Um, like, I made the mistake of taking a big bite out of the jerky, and it didn't hit me until about, like, two seconds in. Like, <laughs> My mouth started watering, like my eyes started tearing up, my nose started running, and I had like beads of sweat like forming on my forehead. <laughs> this is the worst. Like later on, uh, my stomach felt like it was cramping. It, it was just, it was just a rough experience. And once again, like I don't understand like what the point is to having food that spicy. Like I can't even enjoy it at that point. So. For those of you that like really, really spicy foods, I I don't know how you do it. Like, if I can't taste my food, then I don't need it to be that spicy. <laughs> Favorite thing about ASMR? I'd have to say its ability to help me unwind. Uh, I tend to think a lot and stay inside my own head. And when I get to the point where I start getting mentally burned out, um, I'll listen to an audio and it'll help me relax. Uh, I think that it can do that. Like its ability to do that is pretty cool. Do you plan on doing more series? I do. Um, I actually have a few projects in mind, but <laughs> here's the thing. <laughs> I'm always jumping around from idea to idea and it's it's hard to put my focus and energy into just one series or a single audio um, along with that I sometimes get creators block so I have no idea what I want to do um, but I do know that there's stuff I want to follow up on um, like some of the friends to lovers audios uh, I know you guys have been wanting um, like continuations of some of that stuff like part twos and and whatnot uh, and I will. I'll eventually get to them. Uh, there's that. And there's some new stuff that I've been wanting to try out and kind of test the waters with. So, yeah. No spoilers. <laughs> okay. Last question. What is something you can't live without? Well... Besides the basic necessities like food, water, air, Wi-Fi, uh, I'm not too sure. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say that I can't live without it, but it would be very inconvenient if I didn't have my phone. Uh, I use it for practically everything. Uh, I use it for music. I use it for work. Uh, I use it to find answers to the random questions that I have. Um, I use it to talk to you guys. Um, yeah, like I said, if, if I didn't have my phone, it wouldn't be like a life ending. Um, I, I could still figure out how to get things done without it, but yeah, it'd just be inconvenient. So that wraps it up for the Q and A audio. Um, once again, I hope you guys enjoyed the answers to the questions and for the ones that I couldn't find an answer to, um, really, really sorry. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for your wonderful questions. Thank you guys for your support, your encouragement, all your kind words and comments. And I hope I can continue to be worthy of your guys' praise. Um, I hope you have a great day, a great week. Um, hopefully it's going well for you. And if not, then hang in there. Uh, I'm going to have another audio up probably tomorrow. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. If I can squeeze in another recording and figure out what it is I want to record, then I'll do it. But if not, then I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, that about wraps it up. Uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.